is Brian. Thanks, Stace. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Standing Committee of Council for March 6th, 2023. You have before you a copy of tonight's agenda. We are going to remove item J. It will be covered in the admin inquiries as we go, so remove that one. And we are going to shift our in-camera session. We'll go before I. So we'll go in camera before item number I. We'll come out and deal with item number I. Um, looking for a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Councillor Dufert, seconded by Councillor Wall. Any questions? All in favor? Thank you, motion carried. Any declarations of interest? None being noted, we'll move on to item number four and I'll pass it over to SAO Smith. Thank you. Um, on the, uh, on virtually connecting in with us today, um, we've got the housing NWT and, and representatives from Planet Consulting um, to speak to the community housing plan. So uh, the housing plan was developed in partnership with the uh, housing uh, NWT in 2021, I think we first started. And uh, it's been two years now that we've been working together to prepare uh, through a pandemic and, and the flood emergencies uh, to get to this point of presenting to council uh, the proposed community housing plan. Uh, later on in your agenda, under new business, there is an item to actually uh, move for approval uh, as we're recommending. Uh, but thought, we thought we'd first start with uh, a presentation on the, on the plan and give you an opportunity to ask any questions at that point. Um, so we have Planet North. Uh, they've been contracted to support development of the plan. Um, online we have Sophie Mac, Maximo, Maximovsky, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm destroying that, but uh, Dara Philpott and uh, Christine Wendman, uh, and also Chris Van Dyke, who's, uh, I believe, the, I'm not sure, Chris, if you're still the acting manager with uh, housing NWT for the community planning uh, area. So I will pass it off to Dara, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. And so I see that the uh, presentation is up on the screen. Um, Glenn, is it you that is uh, controlling that? Correct, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'll let you know when I'm ready to advance. Okay, perfect. Okay, so first, thanks very much for having us here. Um, we're really pleased to finally be at this place to be presenting a draft plan for your consideration. Um, and uh, so what we are proposing that we do with uh, our time in the next about 20 minutes is what we have. <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about, like, first, what is a community housing plan? Second, we'll talk about the process that we use to develop the Hay River housing plan and, and uh, make sure that you understand who was involved. It was a very comprehensive process. We'll dig into what's in the plan at a high level but really touching on some of the key things that um, it's important for you to, to understand. Um, and then for, for fourth, we'll uh, look at how the plan will be implemented. Then to conclude, we'll talk about what the next steps are. Then we'll open it up for Q&A. What we're proposing is that we go through our full presentation so that you have a sense of what the plan is um, as a whole. And, and then we'll have questions at the end if that works for people. Otherwise, you know, we can take questions as we go, but this way we know we'll get everything covered. Okay, so first, what is a community housing plan? At its very simplest, a community housing plan is a systematic assessment of what a ho housing needs are in a community and a plan to make it better. So it's really based on a realistic assessment of the housing uh, of a community's housing situation, and we used um, something called a SWAB model, looking at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and barriers. A plan sets a vision. It identifies guiding principles, really broad housing goals, um, and then more specific objectives, and then identifies what needs to be done to get there in the form of an action plan. So why would you do one? 
Um, a housing plan really helps you make decisions about what to do. Um, and then really planning is as much about the process as the product. So through the planning process, there's a lot of uh, relationships that are built, developing a shared understanding amongst everyone who's involved. Um, and so some of the outputs that come out of it are identification of resources that are available and an idea of how you can work together to access those and then make progress on the goals that you've set. Um, housing NWT supports the development of community housing plans across the NWT. So this is one of a number of plans that were done over the same period. Okay, if we could go to the next slide. So what was the process? Um, as um, Glenn mentioned, the process started in the fall of 2021 and it took a little longer than we had anticipated due to delays first associated with two different COVID uh, lockdowns and then unfortunately the 2022 flood. Um, but we finally got where we are today, which is great. Um, the planning process has four phases in total. And this slide shows the first three phases because we're really at the end of the third one now um, at the conclusion of this presentation and, and adoption of the plan by council. So the first phase is what we call pre-planning. Um, and probably what's the most important part of the pre-planning is identifying who needs to be involved and setting up the advisory committee. Uh, the next slide will tell you a little, don't go there yet, Glenn, but it'll tell you a little bit more about who was on the advisory committee. Um, so phase two, this is understanding need. This is really the foundation of figuring out what we needed to do. Uh, and as I said, we used the SWAB model. I used understanding the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and barriers. It involved a desktop, uh, some desktop work. So that was looking and analyzing um, NWT Bureau of Statistics data for Hay River census data. We looked at council reports and plans and um, synthesized uh, planning documents, uh, capital planning, those kinds of things. With that in mind, and after presenting that and working with our advisory committee, we then moved into engagement. And the techniques that we used were to do a survey. Uh, we did a number of interviews. We did both in-person and online focus groups. And then while we were, finally, when we were able to come to Hay River, we did pop-up tables. That's where we set up in high traffic areas so that we could have some focused conversations with community members. And we set up at the rec center, and it was uh, a really effective. And that all fed into the needs assessment report. The third phase, um, was the housing forum. So in advance of that, we took what we heard through our um, desktop work and our first phase of engagement, and we came and brought in a draft plan um, and shared that with a really broad group of stake uh, stakeholders at um, the housing forum, and that happened last November. And we workshopped those goals, those objectives, the vision, um, both the five-year and the 20-year vision. And also at that, we developed the action plan. So if you could go to the next slide, Glenn. So who was involved? So as I mentioned, our advisory committee was really um, foundational and helped us all the way through the process. And we had representatives um, from the Chamber of Commerce, from the Family Support Center, Hay River's Council for Persons with Disabilities. Um, we had Hay River Local Housing Authority, Hay River Maitsi, Kaladechi First Nation, representatives from the public, senior society, of course, um, representation from the town of Hay River, West Point First Nation, and Housing NWT, both headquarters, um, as well as um, the local office, so slave. And in particular, I want to recognize um, Glenn Smith's leadership through this. Uh, we had um, Peter McGill um, supporting us, and then it moved to Jeff Groenwagen towards the end. So um, strong guidance all the way through from a really great group. And we met six times overall, and also got written feedback on um, all the documents that came out. As I mentioned, there was broad organizational and public involvement. Um, other organizations that were involved, uh, CMHC, 
um, many GNWT departments, including MACA, LANS, Health and Social Services, ECE, um, Housing NWT, different parts of them, including the South Slave Office, their infrastructure divisions, the design, um, their land, the Housing NWT LANS division, community relations, and homelessness. And all of the represent, many representatives from that group came and provided their expertise and their time. We had um, participation, really great participation, from local developers, um, including Arcan Rose, Heritage Valley Capital, Habitat for Humanity, Salvation Army, Army, some in person, some virtually, some through interviews, but really a, a great participation um, and input throughout the process. We also had multiple opportunities for public participation. Okay, on to the next slide. Okay, so what's in the plan? So, uh, let's get my notes organized here. So it sets out a five-year vision, and it sets out a 20-year vision based on what we heard through engagement. There are five different goals with supporting objectives. At a high level, the first one deals with land for housing development. The second one, diversifying and increasing housing stock. The third one deals with housing with integrated support services for seniors and um, the vulnerable population. Fourth, home maintenance. The fifth, housing resilience and sustainability. And sixth, deals with implementation of the plan. We're going to dig a little bit into each of those goal areas to give you a sense of what it is. And if you've read the documents, just to bring it to top of mind. So if you can go to the next slide. Okay, so the first one. This goal is that Hay River has an inventory of development ready land for new residential development. This goal is really about how access to land for housing is really foundational to success. Objectives 1A and B are about maximizing the use of already developed land and getting any unused land back into active use to meet need. And these two objectives respond to a need to address the high cost of land, of land development, and that recognizing that using already developed land can be cost effective. 1A focuses on what can be done to encourage privately owned land, reclamation and redevelopment, and also the removal of derelict buildings. And 1B, focuses on getting government-owned back, owned land back to active use. So some of the key town-led actions that support this are about conducting an inventory of vacant land, both private and government, learning about incentives to get private landowners to develop their land and disincentives to hold on to vacant land. Uh, there are actions around bylaw review identified, including reviewing the unsightly land bylaw, solid waste management bylaw, and the land administration bylaw to identify potential barriers and also to implement what has been learned through that, um, that uh, review of incentives from other jurisdictions. There's actions around approaching CMHC to initiate the federal lands initiative process. So that's a process through which the federal government will transfer land um, to others to get it used again. And finally, there's actions around communication to promote development um, on vacant land to make sure that uh, the people in the community are aware of, of the value in, in developing land. Objective 1C is really about government working together to find suitable multifamily land. And so the reasoning behind this is that there really are multiple organizations seeking to find appropriate land to develop housing and other public infrastructure. Um, and that there's opportunities for efficiencies, for matching needs to suitable land. And so some of the actions to support Objective 1C are seeking resources for a collaborative land development plan. Um, and um, it identifies that rezoning um, is appropriate as needed and that land swaps and transfers are tools that can be used. Okay, let's move to goal two. Goal two, um, 
governments and the private sector collaborate to, to diversify and increase Hay River housing stock. So this is really the meat and potatoes of the plan in a lot of ways. Um, objective 2A uh, is about collaboration with multifamily developers. Hay River's housing stock is predominantly large single-family units. And so the needs assessment really um, identified the need to focus on um, increasing the availability of multifamily rental and condo units. So some of the actions here to support Objective 2A in particular are learning about and using development agreements as a tool to really support and align community pro uh, new projects, multifamily projects with housing needs, and it identifies um, town and developers working together to site new multifamily residential housing. Objective 2B is about reducing barriers and promoting living suites, garden suites and duplexes. The River has a lot of, has large lot sizes and so there is an opportunity here and um, as you all know much work has been done recently to review and revise your zoning bylaw. So the actions around this one really are about communication about this work to homeowners and developers so that they're aware of those changes and about monitoring how those recent, that recent work um, is making progress towards the objective and then adjusting as needed. Objective 2C, it's about getting government-owned housing uh, houses back to active use. Um, there are some government-owned houses that sit vacant, and this is something that came up and was important to the public. Um, so some of the actions around this are, again, to take advantage of the federal land initiative process and to um, reach out to CMHC and activate that, and that there is already ongoing work that will be continued by Housing NWT to address this issue. And that's goal two. Now I'm going to hand it over to Sophie. Oh, shoot, I forgot to get Sophie to introduce herself at the beginning. I'm so sorry, Sophie. Introduce yourself, Sophie, and um, if you could take it away for goal uh, three. Great. Thanks, Dara. Um, and I appreciate it. I, I think Glenn introduced me at the beginning, so thanks, Glenn. Um, yes, I've been working with Dara on the Hay River Housing Plan. I, I work with uh, Christine Wenman as well at Planet North. So goal three is very much focused on Hay River's vulnerable unhoused um, sector as well as seniors. Um, we have objective 3A, which is um, being a lead role for the town to establish a community of practice for NGOs supporting unhoused and vulnerable community members. And so um, this objective is really in response to a need for um, greater collaboration between some of the NGOs in the, in the community that are doing really great work to support the unhoused population. Um, sort of some of the key action items that were identified in here are identification of program gaps and overlaps. Um, some targets coming out of this objective as well are, include the creation of a pathfinder position to support program users in, in navigating between different, um, different services and programs that are available in the community as well as the identification of new tools, programs, or resources that can support that work that those NGOs are doing through, through collaboration with the town. Um, objective 3B is quite focused on um, specifically integration between existing service streams in the community, which are emergency, self, emergency shelter services and sort of this emerging need that we're hearing for transitional housing and some of the work that is currently being led by different NGOs in the community, such as the Hay River Council for Persons with Disabilities. Um, some of the key actions and objectives or targets, I should say, within this objective are to secure funding um, and do some site planning, um, site design, and, and start to get into program development for what that transitional housing would look like in Hay River and how it would be integrated um, with emergency shelter services to ensure that there's support for those users of the program um, to enter into transitional housing and then supports as well for, for beyond transitional housing. So the plan digs into um, that in more detail and provides some context around that. Objective um, 3C and 3D, we kind of switch in these last two objectives of goal three, which are uh, focused on the seniors community in Hay River. 
Um, Hay River has a very active and engaged uh, senior society and seniors community at large, so this was a very important um, population to represent in the plan. Objective 3C is quite focused on um, the Hay River Senior Society taking a lead in terms of identifying uh, funding, securing land, and leading um, some design and site planning for a new seniors um, housing project in the community. And so this is, this is a piece that um, Hay River Senior Society has been engaged on throughout our planning process and, and wishes to take the lead on with support from, from the town and other partners. Objective 3D is focused on um, partners working together with governments to increase support programs for seniors so that they can age in place. And so um, where this comes in, in terms of some of the key actions um, that are reflected in the housing plan is for the senior society to look to hire um, a senior navigator, for example, to help support program outreach with seniors in the community and streamline some funding applications. Um, looking, for example, at expansion of the, um, the paid family caregiver program, which um, the, the Hay River Health and Social Services Authority is currently reviewing. So essentially, um, this objective is really focused on um, building on the strength of the senior society um, as an advocate for, for seniors housing in the community and, and program supports to uh, be integrated with that housing. One last thing that I'll mention about um, the objectives under Goal 3, um, and in particular Objectives 3A and 3B, is that they really have identified the Social Issues Committee in Hay River, which I understand is, is sitting with the town of Hay River, as a lead in, in supporting um, the sort of kickoff for these objectives, but certainly there are a number of very important um, NGO and other collaborators in the community that are referenced. Um, for supporting and, and driving the actions that are identified in this section of the plan. Next slide. Goal four is, as, as Dara mentioned, is very focused on um, supporting homeowners in the community to be able to access the materials and the supports that are needed to, um, to encourage regular home maintenance and repair. And so um, the objectives that emerged through this goal are really focused on um, essentially wanting to raise awareness amongst homeowners of what different programs are available, for example, through Housing NWT, and, and Housing NWT is currently going through a strategic renewal, which is including review and evaluation of, the, of its existing homeowner um, programs and other uh, supportive tools. And so this is a really opportune um, time um, to be engaging in this work. And so um, objective 4A is really focused on collaboration between governments, collaboration between the town and between housing and WT and looking more closely at some of those programs as well as considering other program funding opportunities to provide those supports for homeowners. One of the other key actions that are identified in this area are um, for uh, look, looking to identify and potentially hire a South Slave program navigator that would be um, located at the South Slave District Office for Housing NWT, which happens to be um, in Hay River. So it's quite community focused. Objective 4B um, is about the town of Hay River working with government partners to create programs and incentives to support residents to enter and stay into the trades. And so um, this is such an important objective that really ties into the, the need to increase housing supply in the community as well, um, ensuring that trades, um, the trade sector is, is supported and encouraged in the community, as I know this is also a, a priority, as Glenn has pointed out, in terms of the town's economic development as well. So some of the key um, actions that are identified um, under Objective 4B are for the, um, the town and partners to reinstate the Schools North Apprenticeship Program at the Diamond Dennis Secondary School and to collaborate with partners such as ECE and Aurora College to promote and encourage pathways and incentives for, um, for trades apprenticeships and, um, and those support tools for businesses in the community. Next slide. Back to me. Goal five, 
Ski River housing is resilient and sustainable. So this goal really speaks to the need to uh, continue to strengthen and improve Ski River's flood resilience, um, as well as, as its resilience to other natural hazards. So there's a suite of three objectives under this goal. 5A is about flood mitigation planning and implementation. Um, the actions here are, include seeking federal funding, including for capital infrastructure projects, and some work to clarify areas of jurisdiction that would be needed to move into the implementation of some of those mitigations, such as uh, jurisdiction for dredging and berms. Objective 5B um, is about policy and bylaw review work to make housing more resilient to floods. And the activities here include um, jurisdictional review with a special focus on implications of policy to flood insurance, um, and then potential review and updates of building standards um, and zoning bylaw, um, depending on what is learned um, and comes out of those jurisdictional reviews. Uh, objective 5C is about developing and implementing plans for wildfire mitigation. So this is to continue on work that is already ongoing. Um, it includes collaboration with ENR for implementation of fire breaks and also um, around biomass management. The sixth and final objective in the housing plan is about plan implementation and ensuring that there's a process in place to really drive that uh, for the town of Hay River. Objective 6A is focused on establishing um, a, a housing committee, which is a committee of partners to work together to support that implementation. So some of the key um, action items under this objective include um, creating, an, creating and adopting a terms of reference for that committee, securing funding and hiring, um, as well as maintaining a project manager to support that process over the five-year term. Objective 6B um, involves the housing committee and the town of Hay River, um, the staff, uh, broader staff, uh, working for the town to really build that capacity to um, to be able to work in, in housing as an area in your community. Um, so it's about expanding access to tools and policies, um, and we have some uh, targets identified uh, around this area as well, including um, essentially looking at a midterm review process, establishing a midterm review process for the plan to make sure that, you know, because there is a lot captured in the plan and um, you want to make sure at a sort of a midterm point that um, implementation is on track or identify um, alternative um, actions that might be needed or targets that um, might be needed to support that success. Next slide. So how will the plan be implemented? Uh, the, the Hay River Housing Plan includes a five-year action plan. We've been referring to uh, many of the actions as we've um, been walking you through the, the goals and objectives. Um, there are, and each objective has either one or more targets, and it may be an outcome measure, so it might be a quantitative thing that really represents success, like the number of new housing units or the percentage of new builds that are duplex, um, and some of them are activity-based. So really tracking how um, we're doing in terms of making progress to complete the things that are identified in the action plan. The action plan also identifies uh, a clear lead, um, supporting partners, and timelines through which the activities will, will take place. Um, and then with regard to the implementation process, there is one more phase uh, still that remains in the action plan. I'm going to ask Sophie to speak a little bit to, to the work that's going to happen with that. Great. If you, have, or if you have anything you want to add, you've covered that pretty well in goal six, but anything you want to add there? Um, thanks, Dara. Just wanted to speak to the next step, which is um, essentially bringing together a meeting of partners to really drive that plan implementation. Um, get into some of the work planning tied to the action plan as well and thinking about who to invite um, to that meeting, um, certainly town staff and, and housing NWT staff as well, but wanted to put that as one of the questions um, forward to standing committee to think about what we want that 
partners' implementation meeting to look like, and in terms of timing as well, um, we can talk about some potential dates for that. Um, from, from our end at Planet North, we've, and if this works in your timelines, we've sort of identified some, some tentative dates the week of March 20th, and we can speak more to that. So the next slide, please, go ahead. So what are the next steps? So any feedback that we receive um, from you today will be incorporated into a final plan, and I, and I understand, and Glenn, jump in here um, to add or, or, or correct, that it's going to be tabled um, for Council on March 20th. And then Sophie was just talking about some of the initial support for implementation that can, will be provided by Planet North, which is part of this project. And then finally, um, it'll move into the phase of monitoring, evaluation, evaluating progress, and considering uh, new actions or changing course as needed to make sure that you get towards those, uh, reach those objectives and hit the targets that we've set. Or understand, if we can't, why not, and then making decisions based on that. Okay, next slide. So that's the end of our presentation. I think we took a little bit longer than 20 minutes. Um, but we are happy to answer any questions that you have, and we can move back and forth to look at particular goal areas as needed. Any questions from Council? Council Wall, go ahead. Uh, thank you for your report. Um, I'm just wondering, in 6A, you said that there was there needs to be somebody hired to support this housing committee. And I'm just wondering if that person has been hired, and if not, when will this be done? And I'm just Thank you for that question. Oh, sorry, Glenn, were you, were you looking to speak to that? Well, I'm just wondering if you wanted uh, me to comment on it, but um, why don't you start, and if, if you want to direct it to me, I can. Okay, sounds good. So, um, no, uh, the position hasn't been hired yet. Um, I believe as we've sort of laid out in the action plan, we would need to, the town would need to um, develop a, a job description and look for some funding as needed, um, do a bit of analysis to see if funding would be needed to support the hiring of that position. Um, and then Housing NWT has also expressed um, that they would be a support in, a supportive partner in this process as well um, in terms of um, trying to help and find that person for, for that role and other supports that might be needed. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just add, I, I, I mean, you've done a good job there, but we've, um, the council uh, approved the position and budget that uh, was tied to supporting the social issues committee as well, um, but it is dependent on finding third party funding. Uh, we have taken some steps in applying for funds that have come up uh, ahead of the, your approval of the plan, just in case, we haven't heard anything yet. Um, and as mentioned, uh, NWT Housing is, is looking to provide some support as well. So. Any further questions from Council? I had a question. Go ahead. Um, I guess one of the questions, one of the first questions I have is just some of the discussion on, you know, getting you, you talked about seniors and you talked about different requirements and or what different things of housing that we need is there how do we how do we engage the private sector to I mean obviously it requires private sector to construct some of this stuff I'm assuming some of those will be partnerships whether it's NGOs requiring private companies to help them build houses or um, you know like how the town itself doesn't get involved in, in construction of houses so how do we how do we incorporate this plan to include um, private sector? I guess. So maybe I'll start, and then I think there's elements that go through the plan. So I'll get Sophie to to jump in. But um, there was a really good. First of all, I'd say is that one of the strengths that Hay River has is to have an active um, development community, and they were very engaged throughout the process. And so, as you point out, absolutely, the town can do some things to set the conditions to support the private sector to do their work. And that's what this plan really tries to lay out, is what can the plan do? So focusing on the tools that you have. So some of the new tools that were identified are to work on development agreements, to start to, to do the groundwork and be ready to do land swaps as needed. And sometimes it's communication. 
um, some of the feedback that we had even very recently from one of the local developers is that, you know, this plan, if the, all the things that are set out in this plan can be achieved, it will really make a lot of progress in the next five years, and it will support the local developers to do what they, what they do. And so this plan tries to be really clear about what uh, roles, responsibilities, and tools the town has, and to get the town to, to set out and, and take some steps towards those, which supports um, developers to do their work. And Glenn, do you want to add to that? No, I, I, well, I, just to mention, I mean, some of those partners that have been through the plan, I think you had it in your opening comments there, but Arcan, Rose Construction, Greenway, uh, the high-rise developers, of course, Housing Corporation, all in, involved with the plan. Um, you know, there's some, uh, there's some demonstrated interest specifically in some areas, but I think that we also recognize that, you know, with this plan, um, the opportunity for promoting economic development for developers, it's been a bit of a, a struggle, right? Um, but seeing that there's a plan, seeing that there's a plan that developers can use to uh, access investments and, um, funding that we, we, we all need um, is, is just critical. I think it's just it's such a big uh, achievement that uh, comes out of having the plan. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, we, we've, got a, we've got a very supportive, even though we'd, we'd like to see more um, developers on the private sector to support the plan, we, we do have those companies in town that, um, you know, get us, get us moving. Thank you. Any further questions from Council? Councillor Doe or Deputy Mayor, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, not so much uh, questions, I guess. But I, uh, you know, appreciate uh, the amount of work that's gone into this. I know uh, it's been in the uh, in the blender for quite some time. Uh, I know we've had a lot of input uh, from the community, and I I would agree with that sentiment that. Uh, was just shared. I, I think that there's it's a good plan that um, we could see some benefit from, assuming that you know it's it's a plan that's actually in in progress and it's working. I know that uh, well, that's going to be one of our challenges is finding the resources uh, internally to be able to uh, drive uh, drive this forward. But I think um, definitely a worthwhile endeavor, and I uh, I'm supportive of the of the plan as it is. Um, in general, as long as we can, uh, as long as we can find those resources and, and work the plan, because like any of these plans, they're all good, but uh, if they're sitting on a shelf somewhere, they're no good to anyone. But uh, thank you to everyone that uh, had input on it. Thank you, and um, I will reiterate those comments. I know there has been a ton of work. I want to thank our residents and all those that were involved over the two-year process. I guess to get to where we're at now. Um, yeah, there will be some challenges, I'm sure, as I will look through it today. I was thinking, wow, you know, we've had a recent land freeze, so that kind of ties our hands in some areas. But again, opening up existing that's not being used is, is a priority. Um, yeah, um, thank you for your hard work, and I want to thank everybody that was involved in the process, administration especially. I know that Glenn's been knee-deep in it, Jeff, for his role as we move forward. And yeah, it's exciting. Another box ticked and hopefully we can see some some action I guess on this file. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no further questions. Oh, oh moving on to Administrative inquiries, and again, I will pass the floor over to SAO Smith. Um, thank you, Worship. Uh, just coming out of our month end reports here, so <coughs> excuse me, I'm also still coming off a cold. Um, so, yeah, lots of information in the reports, but anything that we'll add today, uh, we'll just do a round table now. So, we'll start with the Director of Finance and Administration. Thanks, Your Worship. So we have the Board of Revisions meeting scheduled next week, Wednesday, on March 15th, to hear the property assessment appeals. Um, we have 22 appeals from residents this year compared to eight from the previous year, so it's a, a big increase. 
And then I am working on the preliminary mill rate calculations for uh, this year's property taxes. And I'll be presenting that um, at next week's uh, finance committee meeting on March 16th. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions for our director of finance? None noted. Dr. Cassio Smith. Thanks, Your Worship. I'm next to the Director of Protective Services. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, as of today, for the month of March, um, the department has responded to 14 ambulance calls and three false alarm calls. Um, updates to current initiatives. This past weekend, we had a 1001 uh, Practical Skills Weekend for our students. We uh, had seven students participate on Saturday and Sunday, full days of uh, ropes, knots, uh, ladders, forcible entry, fire extinguishers. So got lots of good experience and a uh, good group of people working there. So it was a good weekend. Um, in addition to that, a uh, large amount of time is going into breakup planning right now and just um, working and developing and reviewing various documents and plans that need to be updated, along with regular meetings with different involved agencies. Um, this will be dominating for, the, for my schedule basically up until breakups completed. So that's a, where a lot of our work's focused right now. Um, so currently working on our public meeting agenda, uh, the parts that I have to do with that. Um, developing a tabletop exercise with uh, three different scenarios that we'd likely see in our breakup, um, or at least one we have seen. Um, and uh, having some preliminary discussions on our, our monitoring equipment, logistics and programming and stuff, getting that set up. Uh, we're developing some evacuation kits for first responders, um, cue cards to inform evacuees of what to do and, and also making sure we have the required tools to document who's, who's staying, who's going and um, that sort of thing. And uh, we're doing some uh, equipment specking for breakup operations. So that's currently what, uh, what we're working on. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for our Director of Protective Services? Thanks. I know your hands are full with all of this. That's surprising. I'm, I was taken a bit aback by how many ambulance calls we've had already. Today's the sixth. Back to SEO. Thank you. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, the Director of Recreation and Community Services. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, most information is in the report for February. Uh, I did want to underline, also, uh, however, that uh, um, some Hay River athletes are coming back from the Canada Winter Games. Some have already returned, but just wanted to underline that, uh, that fact. Our programming staff is planning an event to celebrate athletes uh, from the Canada Winter Games and Arctic Winter Games. Uh, we'll share that information with Council and with the public once, once that date and the, uh, the activity is further planned. Um, Recreation Centre was uh, very busy this weekend. Uh, Hay River Minor Hockey hosted 10 out-of-town teams and they had three teams of their own. Uh, that was the U7 and U9 groups, so it's a lot of young families and little kids making use of the facilities. Uh, including the Aquatic Centre, which was very busy all weekend. Uh, we received great feedback on our facilities once again, and, uh, and I think we, uh, residents and, uh, and management echoes that. Um, <clears throat> Hay River Figure Skating Club is hosting their year-end carnival this Saturday at 3 o'clock. I wanted to bring that to Council and the public's attention. We also have the Hay River Curling Club hosting the NWT Senior Curling Championships this weekend in town. Um, uh, as for myself, um, issuing tenders this week, uh, a lot of it's for summer uh, activities. Uh, so we have RFQs being issued for flower supply, uh, Vail Island mowing contract, and for watering services for some of the uh, tree and green space improvements, uh, tree planting and green space improvements we did last year. Um, also, issued a tender today for multi-event flooring system which has been on the capital plan for a couple years now that's through Candor expanding tourism uh, funding that we received uh, or that we received confirmation a couple of years ago uh, tender will also be issued this week for um, uh, right on more um, so just a reminder to council last year 
purchased a pull behind mower uh, this year. We're replacing one of our right on mowers and we'll be replacing one more right on mower next year. All of those are part of the capital plan previously viewed and approved by council. Uh, lastly, as part of our breakup preparations that the Director of Protective Services has already mentioned, uh, we've scheduled our annual inspection of our fire alarm system to ensure that the community centre can be uh, can serve as an evacuation centre. Uh, there are other inspections that will be scheduled in coming weeks that includes the sprinkler system and that's all to meet uh, MACA and the uh, fire marshal's requirements. Um, thank you. Thank you, Director. Any questions for our Director of Recreation? You shout out to your staff. It was an amazing weekend. It was pretty busy over there. She was hopping. Okay, back to S.A.O. Smith. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Yeah, very busy there. I think we even had the Olympian Megan Augusta in town, too. Uh, not us, but um, NWT Hockey or the Territorial Association. So, um, yeah, very busy there. And, of course, activities with KFN and Cam Carnival. Um, we'll go next to the Director of Public Works and Services. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, as, as others touched on, uh, the monthly reports are out, so they, they hold the majority information, but there were a few points uh, I would just wanted to add on a bit here. Um, I did note some, some sewer line freeze-ups that we are seeing in uh, various areas around town and, and are being actioned by our crews, but I thought one of them was worth noting because we did find it uh, during a, an inspection of a problematic area rather than a call-out from the public, so that is showing a bit of a as we map and, and maintain the records of these, these manholes, potentially we can get on these problematic areas a little sooner. Um, obviously, we have to be there at basically the exact right time to catch it before it does become an issue, but uh, we're gonna do our best to uh, institute a bit of a, a periodic inspection moving forward. Um, we are also documenting them and uh, looking at potential upgrades uh, in some locations this summer if, if they are suited for, uh, for small repairs and whatnot. Um, the Director of Finance and I had a meeting with insurers on Lift 1, I believe it was last week. Um, so there's a brief update in the report, but essentially they're in a holding pattern until we receive our report from Stantec on our options. So they want to see what, what Stantec's recommending and then obviously we drive all of our options through after we get that and, and bring a recommendation to Council. So that is uh, scheduled to be in hopefully the end of next week, if not next week, uh, soon the week after. So it's, it's forthcoming. Not all doom and gloom on the snow clearing front this week, so it's a bit of a change from my previous updates, but uh, with the lack of snow that we've seen recently and, and the equipment actually holding together, we've been able to clean up some areas. Um, so parking lots by the rec center, uh, some crescents. Um, we did uh, go after the Ray uh, Benwalk Park area, which uh, does cause uh, some issues for some residents in the spring with uh, some snow melt in there, so we were able to get in there and remove a bunch of uh, major piles of snow um, as we had a bit of downtime from street clearing. So that was good. We got that out of the way uh, a bit earlier than, than we have in, in the past. So that was great. Uh, general comment here, design and tenders are progressing well for summer work. Um, so there's a few high profile ones out there with industrial drive, uh, a multi-year asphalt tender and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> you can see updates in, in, the, in the update I have at the end of my, my monthly report. But uh, as a general comment, they're, they're going well and progressing. I mentioned the MOU from the GM, uh, GNWT in my report. Uh, I chatted with them again today. It's passed reviews from their legal and lands department, uh, and it's back with their health department for a final review. So they're thinking that'll be within our hands in a couple of days here. So very positive there. Um, and lastly, we are uh, we are underway with interviews for the manager of public works position. So we closed uh, closed application process, I guess, last week, uh, and we've had a couple couple interviews so far and, and very positive candidates so we're hoping that we'll be able to make an offer in, in the short term here and, and try to get that position backfilled uh, before we lose Harold Harold and uh, just before breakup so a uh, bit of a time crunch there but we're gonna do what we can and that's my updates for this week thank you questions for our director of public works councillor wall thank you madam mayor um, there have been a few minor car bump ups accidents in town um, and I'm hoping before anything, anyone gets seriously injured, I was wondering, I, th I think it would be a good idea to have some more dirt spread at the major intersections in town um, on those cold, slippery days. So, thank you. So that was not a question, just Noted. a statement. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Wall. Anything further from Council? 
Nothing noted. Back to us. Are you good? <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Back to us, Ceo Smith. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. We'll go next to the Assistant Senior Administrative Officer. Great. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, we've been working through uh, the Green Inclusive Municipal Building Grant application for the Aquatic Center roof and windows uh, and a few related items. Uh, the uh, updated schedule for it is March 28th, uh, 2023 for a deadline. The, um, the application needs to be done on a software product that the federal government's put out called RETScreen, which predominantly requires an engineer to do, so it makes it a little more challenging. I don't know what small communities do, but, um, uh, you know, we're, we're working through it. We, uh, we've got, um, uh, you know, we've got that handled, and um, we've got pretty much all the letters of support. We've got a couple left to go, but um, so everything looks on track for that one. It's a pretty substantial grant application, 100% uh, funding, so... Uh, and, it, and it does go retroactively, so some of the work we've done previously, we can catch up on, on some of the funds. So it's definitely worth the effort, and, and it is a lot of effort. Um, spring Breakup page, 2023 page, has been updated. Uh, I archived the 2022 items on the bottom, so they're not, you know, if you need to go back and reference. I'm going to read through all of those and, and pull out what we, you know, what makes sense again this year. and. I know the SAO and I are going to meet about uh, some of the remaining comms to be done for that, but it's all looking good. Um, and the upcoming community meeting details are there as well, um, and they've been advertised on the Facebook page. Uh, did uh, one today and um, scheduled two more, so on Friday and Monday, I guess. Uh, so that should have should have gotten out to everybody. Um, Jill and I have a meeting with a graphics consultant tomorrow to finalize some of the details of the tourism website. Um, as you know from the report, Jill's been updating uh, all our printed material, and uh, which has been good because that's all the hard work underneath, you know, so uh, adding it into the website at the end here is fairly straightforward now, you know, once the content's in place. So um, working on a, finally getting around to uh, working on a communication plan. Uh, been, doing a few other things in the interim, but um, so I can devote a, a good long stretch of time to, you know, get a handle on that and, and look at how we're going to improve our social media messaging and, and our website, of course, right? So um, submitted an updated um, information to Canor. There's an extra 250000 that became available for the downtown beautification and flood repair project. So um, we we there's no end of things to spend money on of course as you know so that wasn't a real challenging thing to do <laughs> um and then finally send out a press release on the funding uh the town received for the sundog development project um we're waiting to see if any of the papers or media outlets pick up on it and then uh we'll kind of go from there we're that's part of the communication plan is trying to build some relationships so we'll see what they bite on and you know go from there so that's that's it for me thank you Thank you. Any questions for our assistant SAO? None noted. Back to SAO Smith. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. A few things for me. Um, as uh, other staff have mentioned, um, quite a bit of time being spent on flood planning and preparedness. Um, the draft updates to the Town of Hay River Emergency Plan, that's uh, an agenda item under new business to um, move forward for approval um, through council. Uh, we did meet with the Community Emergency Management Committee last week to review that emergency plan and discuss some other uh, membership roles. Um, I think we had participation from, from most of the members, so uh, that was good to see, get them ready and thinking uh, as we move into this upcoming flood season. Um, we also invited the Hamlet of Enterprise to participate in that call um, to uh, recognizing that they had a, a very valued role last year in the uh, um, evacuations. Uh, yeah, several meetings still scheduled or have been scheduled with uh, Hay River Health, MACA, Department of Infrastructure, uh, Hay River Housing uh, over the next week or two to discuss their roles in supporting uh, the emergency plan specific to breakup and potential flooding. Uh, our operational town. Uh, our flood operational planning team, uh, which is some of the administrative team <clears throat> and council, 
uh, have been reading weekly, uh, just getting prepared for, again, breakup season. Uh, and next week, a uh, important meeting communication was sent out today by the assistant SAO. Um, it's joint communication with the GNWT on the flood recovery update and flood preparedness public meeting. So that's March 14th at 7 to 9 p.m. at the uh, community hall. Uh, so just working on content for that and meeting logistics. Uh, council is uh, invited to attend and uh, a couple members of the council will be on the, on the panel there speaking and presenting. Um, outside of that, our electrical franchise. Uh, so both the town and NTPC are planning to submit um, through PUB requested applications to the PUB this week. And that's pertaining to the franchise approvals that are needed and um, rates for NTPC for the, uh, yeah, for the pending electrical services franchise agreement. Um, have been <coughs> have some have received some information from lands. Um, there were some concerns, information presented previously to council uh, with respect to the recent land withdrawals. Um, so I, I do have a meeting scheduled next or this month as a follow up to that to discuss some of our specific interests, our land interests, and I will be, be in a good position then to bring information to council and see what our uh, next steps might be from there. Uh, I've been working with. The MTS on uh, an outstanding land lease agreement uh, that hasn't been executed yet and uh, is equating to some uh, money owed. So I'm hopeful that we can get that approved here uh, as it kind of impacts our year end as, as well as theirs, I'd suggest. Um, also had a meeting last week with uh, Rotary. Uh, they requested a meeting to meet to discuss heydays and discussion on how we could support, uh, the town could support the event. So we have received a donation and sponsorship request um, for facilities and coordination of, of, for coordination type support. Uh, so we plan to approve that and it seems like things are heading in a good direction with that major community event. Uh, and just finally, a couple things with human resources. The Director of Public Works and Services mentioned um, as that we're working through the supervisor interviews this week. So. Hopefully we um, uh, find somebody through that. Uh, recreation still deal dealing with facility maintainer, um, some leave and, uh, and uh, an open position that we're recruiting for. And in finance, we have uh, a vacant admin clerk position. So we are we're taking a better look, just a little bit of restructuring and, uh, at our internal and external functions and how those are being supported um, to yeah, put the position, put, put the department in a little better position to support the demands there and hopefully reduce some associated costs. And that's it for our, our administrative inquiries, unless there's any questions. Any questions for our SAO? Very thorough, no questions. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number six, new business. Can we put um, the Deputy Mayor and Councillor Bouchard up so that if they choose to I'll be able to see them. Okay, item 6A is the Public Works Monthly Report for February. Looking for a motion. Councillor Duford, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River accepts the Public Works Monthly Report for February 2022 as presented. Thank you. Second above. Councillor Grunewagen. Any questions to the motion? None noted. Agreed to take forward. Agreed. Thank you. Can't see those guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Recreation monthly report for February. Item B. Looking for motion. Councillor Chambers, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll move the. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River accepts the report entitled Recreation and Community Services Monthly Report for February 2023 as presented. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Wall. Any questions to the motion? Agreed to take forward. Thank you. Thank you. Item 6C, Tourism and Economic Development Report for February 2023. 
Looking for a motion. Okay. Go ahead, Council Chambers, sorry. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, no. If they're on mute and, and off video, we'll put it back up. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River accepts the Tourism and Economic Development Report for the month of February. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Grunaway again. Any questions for the motion? Agreed to take forward? Thank you. 6D. Is that Robert? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, item 6D is the. Nope, we just did that one, didn't we? Are we on emergency? No, we nope, We're in D? Right, okay, right. perfect. Jeez. Okay, so item 6D is the emergency services monthly report for February. Councillor Dufert, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move that the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River approves the Emergency Services Activity Report for February 2023 as presented. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Wall. Any questions for the motion? Agreed to take forward? Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Item 6E is the Municipal Services Monthly Report for February. Looking for a motion. Councillor Granaway, can go ahead. That's it, isn't it? Yep, go ahead. Okay, all right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Haver accepts the Municipal Enforcement Report for February 2023 as presented. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Wall. Any questions to the motion? All in favor? Or agree to take forward, sorry. Agreed. Thank you. 6F, excused absence. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Wall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River excuses Councillors Willows from the Standing Committee of Council, Monday, March 6, 2023. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Grunewagen. Any questions? Agreed to take forward. Thank you. 6G, emergency, service, emergency plan report. Look for motion, Councillor Dufert, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River approves the 2023 Town of Hay River Emergency Plan as presented. Seconded by Councillor Grunaway again. Agreed to take forward. Mm -hmm. Worship, I had a question in there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor Bouchard. Yeah, no, and I know there's been lots of work, and I commend the administration for all the hard work we're going into this process. Um, just kind of reading through it there and mentioned to the SEO today, just if we could minimize the amount of names on the in the plan itself because often these plans change um or people's positions change you know counselors come and go type things so i know we've tried to minimize it as much as possible but just putting people's positions whether you know from example myself as emo coordinator or the assistant emo coordinator type thing if we could put the titles of you know as opposed to the names of people that are currently in those positions because in one year, some of those government positions change and stuff like that. So that was the only comment I had from reviewing it the uh, last few days here. Thank you. Any other comment, question? I would caution that just because it is what we work with, this document, when we get into a tight spot. And it is also makes us do it yearly to update it. So I. I am fine with the way it is, but if, if we want titles, that's fine as well. Um, so agreed to take forward? Agreed. Thank you. So with that, looking for a motion to go in camera. Councillor Grenaway again, second by Councillor Wall. Oh, we didn't do the housing plan? 
It's been a long day. <laughs> it's a full moon, too. <laughs> okay, so looking for a motion. Go ahead, Councillor Grunewagen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River approves the 2023 Hay River Housing Plan and its execution conditional on securing third party funding for plan coordination. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Wall. Any questions? Agreed to take forward? Thank you. Okay, looking for a motion to go Agreed. in camera. So moved. Second, first. Did you get that, Stacey? Sorry. Yes. Councillor Grunewagen and Councillor Wall. Okay, so we'll take a two minute recess before we go in camera so everybody can get organized. Is everybody staying in camera? <laughs> 